Hi everyone, this is Junbon Park from Graduate School of Clinical Dental Science, the Catholic University of Korea. The topic of my presentation is periodontal regeneration. It is mainly composed of clinical data, and I'm sure that you would learn at least some valuable information from my presentation. Let's start. This is the first summary of my presentation. Previous report in humans have shown that autogenous bone graft or xenograft and membrane resulted in radiographic bone fill and arrest of the disease. The figure on the left side shows the clinical view after elevation of the flap. You may notice very thin, narrow ridge. The figure in the middle shows the result obtained five months after ridge augmentation. The figure on the right side shows cross-sectional image from the cone beam CT. You can clearly see the increase in the rich dimension. It is doubled to tripled depending on the location. This is the second summary. You may see the periapical radiograph on the left side and you can see the radiolucency indicating the loss of periodontium. On the right side, you can see the increase in the radio opacity indicating regeneration of the bony tissue. The summary is as follows. Regeneration is clinically acceptable approach. Use of graft material or growth factors may be applied for tissue regeneration. Comparison of various techniques needs to be performed. Lastly, long-term follow-up of the cases seems necessary for these cases. This is the contents of my presentation. First one is regeneration of heart tissue for dental implantation. This is the clinical photo after elevation of full thickness flap on buccal and palatal area. What would you do for this situation? The ridge is very thin and it may not be possible to install the dental implants at the moment. Let's take a look at the cone beam CT. You can see the thin ridge in the second premolar and first molar area. Let's take a look at the procedures. The periodontal flap was elevated. And then cortication process was done in the buccal plate. Then bone graft particles were applied both on buccal and palatal area. The membrane, which was collagen, was placed in two to three layers. I tried to close the flap with minimal tension. Releasing incision can be further performed to make the flap more movable and tension free. If you use thinner sutures, the tissue damage can be reduced or minimized. 
However, I would like to mention that it is not mandatory to obtain full closure of the flap. The first slide shows the image after application of sutures. The lower left image shows the results obtained three weeks after surgery. It shows an eventful healing. The cross-sectional image of the augmented site five months after surgery shows that there were great amount of heart tissue or radiopacity gain on the right side. Let's take a look at the time of dental implant installation. The implant installation was done at seven months post-operative. Four implants were placed. Two implants had the diameter of 33.5 millimeter and the length of 8 millimeter. Two implants in the molar area had the diameter of 4.5 with the length of 8 millimeter. You can see the occlusal view of the installed implants. Healing abutments were placed after removal of the mount of the fixture. You can see the results obtained two weeks after surgery. It shows very good healing. The first image shows the healing after seven months and two weeks. The right upper image shows two months after the delivery of prosthesis. The radiograph on the lower left corner shows the results obtained three months after the delivery of prosthesis. The last clinical image shows a result nine months after the delivery of prosthesis. You can see that the healthy Gingiva and healthy bone here. You may find the differences before and after the augmentation. The thin ridge was grafted with bone particle and membranes, and the treatment was finished with installing dental implants. The second topic is regeneration of hard tissue around the tooth. It's periodontal treatment. What would you do at this situation? The furcation involvement was seen at the first molar. There was severe defect at the distal half of the second molar. The periodontal rubbing depth of the lingual surface was 4, 5, 5, 6, 6, and 5 for the first molar. The periodontal rubbing depth on buccal surface was 8, 6, 5, 12, 6, and 5. The distance between cemento and anal junction to bony crest was 6 millimeters. The distance between bony crest to bony apex was 3 millimeters. Horizontal defect was 3 millimeters. Granulation tissues were removed and the meticulous root planing was performed afterwards. Enamel matrix derivative was applied. No bone graft particle was applied in this case. The lower left picture shows the result obtained seven months after surgery. Clinical photographs is shown on lower right area. These results were obtained after two years and one month, four years and one month, 
seven years and eight years and five months after surgery. The regenerated heart tissue was maintained with healthy gingiva. This is comparison. The first is a result obtained right after elevation of the flap. The radiograph shown on is obtained right after surgery. Two years and a month post-operative radiograph is shown here. The regenerated heart tissue is maintained up to seven years. I would like to mention that case selection is very, very important. What would you do in this case? The patient was referred by my colleague. The patient really wanted to maintain this lower left molar. You can see the clinical view of buccal and lingual side. The parental problem death for lower left first molar on lingual side is 15, 4, and 5, and the value on buccal surface is 15, 6, and 6 millimeters. The basic therapy, including scaling and root plane, was performed. You can see clinical photo on upper right area. The lower right area shows the radiographic result. You can clearly see the radiolucency mesial root of first molar. The problem depth on mesial surface of the mesial root was greater than 12 millimeters. The elevation of flap was done and root planing was done very carefully. The distance between Sinan 2 and Alaman Junction was 14 millimeters. The distance between Bony Crest to Bony Apex was 60 millimeters. The horizontal defect area varied from 3 to 6 millimeters. The enamel matrix derivative was applied on the visual surface of the tested tooth. The flap was then repositioned and sutures were applied. The sutures were removed 10 days after the surgery. The radiograph shown on lower right area is taken at the same day. This is two weeks result on upper row and one month is on, on lower row. This is the result of the two months after the surgery. The lower left radiograph shows the result on four months indicating changes in the radio opacity. This is seven month results. The periodontal problem death from lingual surface was two, three, and three, and the result on the buccal surface was four, three, and four. The radiograph taken seven months after surgery shows increase in the radio opacity. This is one year and three months results. You can see the buccal and lingual view of the tested tooth. The periodontal problem depth on the lingual side is 2 mm and the value on buccal surface is 2, 3 and 2 mm. I would like to also mention that the gingival recession of the tooth on buccal and lingual surface is 4 mm. This is the image obtained one year and nine months after the surgery. The periodontal problem depth was 3 to 4 millimeters and gingival recession was 4 to 6 millimeters. 
the patient revisited our clinic after eight years and one month. You can see that regenerated area was maintained nicely. This is the comparison data. This is before surgery, two months, four months, seven months, one year and three months, one year and nine months, eight years and one month, eight years and five months. You can clearly see that the regenerated bone can be maintained up to several years from this case. I think periodontal regeneration was obtained in the tested tooth with probing depth less than four millimeters. However, I'd like to mention that the gingival recession occurred at the same time too. So if you're doing surgeries and, and you should predict or you should mention possibility of gingival recession in tested area before applying the surgery. I'm going to mention about considerations while doing or applying the surgery. What would you do for this case? The treatment could be simpler or easier if you do the tooth extraction and implant installation. But the patient wanted to save the tooth and I agreed on that and I performed surgery. The thing I want to mention is that the patient received multiple surgeries for the tested tooth. Let's look at the case. This is the data for periodontal probing depth. The periodontal probing depth for the second premolar was 5, 6, and 10 millimeters on the buccal side and 7, 3, and 10 millimeters on the palatal area. And the tooth had first degree mobility. Basic periodontal therapy, including scaling and root planing, was done before surgery. This is the image during the surgical approach. Flap was elevated, and you can see the occlusal view on the upper right area. Bone graft material was applied along with enamel matrix derivative for the second premolar. You can see the closer view after application of graft materials. The radiograph was obtained right after the surgery, a month after the surgery, and the lower left area is the result obtained three year and one month. The patient reported reduced symptom and reduced immobility up to four, five years. Then the image shown on lower right area is five years and six months. The patient reported of symptoms on the tested tooth. Periodic the periodontal check was done and the patient said that the symptom was getting worse. So we applied root planing and more meticulous oral hygiene. And then we discussed about doing the second surgery on the tested tooth. Periodontal probing depth was 3 to 10 millimeters on the buccal side and 3 to 10 millimeters on the palatal side. The tooth mobility was first grade. Removal of granulation tissue was performed. 
severe body defect was noted on the tested site. The distance between cemento enamel junction to bone crest was 8 mm, and the defect from bony crest to bony apex was 5 mm. The horizontal defect was 3 mm. Take a look at the closer view, and you can guess the dimension of the defect. The bone graft material was applied for the tested site along with amdogain. And the sutures were applied afterwards. You can see the radiograph right after the surgery. And the following radiograph was obtained three months after surgery. Lower left image shows the data at two years and four months. The last one shows two year and nine month image. The tooth was well in function and patient was satisfied. Let's look at the comparison data. First one is before surgery and the second one is right after surgery. Third one is five years and six months, and the last one is taken two years and nine months after second surgery, which is eight years and three months after first surgery. The patient really did not want to extract the tooth. The patient wanted to maintain the tooth and is still in function, and I hope we could get more long-term follow-up for this case. The patient was satisfied even though the patient had to receive two multiple surgeries. I would like to confess that I had to extract the tooth after the surgery too. What would you do for this case? You could see the severe bony defect with calculus deposition. This is the buccal view after removal of granulation tissue. You can see the minimal bone on the buccal side. I'd like to present the data in more detailed fashion. If you look at upper right radiograph, you can see that radiolucency around both molars. If you look at the view of the elevation of the flap, you can see calculus depositions and accumulation of granulation tissue. I tried to clean the tooth and the surrounding area as much as possible. The upper right picture shows on the minimal bony bridge can be noted on the crestal area. Enamel matrix derivative was applied and the sutures were done afterwards. This is results obtained one year and six months after surgery. The patient report of discomfort with mobile teeth. And we decide to extract both molars. The radiograph image shows the result after extraction of both molars. Dental implants were installed at the area with bone graft. Let's look at the comparison. This radiograph is obtained before surgery, and this is a clinical view at the time of surgery, one year and six months after the flap procedure. And the last one shows the image obtained six years after installation of dental implants. The dental implants are well in function. I would like to summarize my presentation here. When the 
patient comes with very thin ridge, there are several ways to approach. But I would like to ask you to apply bone graft for the area and you can increase the dimension of the bone so that you would be able to place dental implants after a couple or several months. This is the second one. You may see radiolucency or bony defect on the apical area. And you can see recovery on the right side. I would like to mention that regeneration is clinically possible and clinically acceptable approach. Use of graft material or growth factors can be applied for tissue regeneration. I would like to ask you to perform this regeneration approach in your clinical field. Thank you very much for your kind attention.